Hello guys, how are you doing? Today we're going to start a very important chapter uh, which is going to allow us to simplify uh, cases that we have to do a, an approximate analysis and this is what we are doing today. Today we are going to start doing uh, an approximate approximate analysis of frames of structures because we are going to do trusses also. But the first the first thing that we are going to do is about frames subject to vertical load. When I say vertical load, I'm talking about rectangular distributed load, which is the most common type of load on frames. I know this is a time where you have computers everywhere and software everywhere, but there are going to be requirements. Some, sometimes, I don't know, you might be in the spot and you have to calculate and the, something simple. And the simplest thing that I can imagine at this level of the game that you are, it would be something like that. And this is a two-story frame with distributed load. I don't care about the value of the load, but let's make it distributed. It could be something like that. It could be something like that. Different loading depending on the characteristics of the structure. But you have something like that. And we have to analyze this. And by analyzing this, I mean, OK, we have to determine the at least the shear moment diagrams for that structure. And in order to do that, the first thing that we have to do is what? Calculate the reactions most of the time. So if we have to calculate the reactions, this is high, This is statically indeterminate. What is the degree of indeterminacy? If we make a cut here and a cut here, we have 3, 6, 9, 12, plus 9, 21 unknowns. And we have basically 1, 2, 3 bodies, minus 3 times 3, so minus 3 times 3, 12 degree of indeterminacy. Just imagine doing this using virtual work uh, method. So we have to find 12 redundant and apply this procedure 12 times. And probably it's going to take us 12 lifetimes to do that also. But we can live with an approximate method in order to find the same results. Or well, not the same results, but something really close, let's say that, that we can live with. What is that? OK, this is basically based on the analysis of things that are pretty well known. For example, if you have this type of structure, a simple supported beam subject to rectangular distributed load, rectangular distributed load like that, we know that, or we should know that at least, the deflection curve is going to be something like that. And the moment diagram is going to be something like that, where this value here is WL squared divided by 2. And of course, L is the length. And W is the value of the distributed law. This is 0, and this is 0. And the inflection point right there of changing the curvature, because it's nothing else, it should be at that point. So I'm going to say that this curve, the only inflection point will happen here, inflection point, and here, inflection point. Another case that we should be familiar with now is, where is my, where is my thing? It's here. I don't like to do this because people look at my hairline, which is not receding. It's non-existent anymore. So then I'm going to do this. And I'm going to be studying another case. And this other case is going to be fixed support, both ends. Fixed support, both ends. And if you put the same type of beam with the same length now, subject to a rectangular distributed omega load and a distance L, the deflected shape for this will be here. There's no rotation, so it has to be entering like that. And then it comes like that, and then it comes back, and then goes like that. Where these and these here are the inflect, inflect, inflection points where the curvature of that deflected shape changes. 
So this is going to be the inflection point. This is going to be the inflection point. And at the same time, the inflection point is going to be also the point where the moment diagram is going to cross zero. It's going to be something like this. Like that. Give or take. These values here are going to be negative WL squared divided by 12. Negative WL squared divided by 12. And this value here is going to be WL squared divided by 24. That's kind of what happened. Now the distance for the inflection point to happen now is going to be 0, 0 0.211L. Same thing here, 0 0.211L is the distance from the edge to the inflection points. What happened here? What type of support do we have there? Do we have a pin support? Nope. Do we have a fixed support? No, not quite yet. So the type of support that we have over there is a support that is uh, determined by the stiffness of the joint. The stiffness of the joint. So it's not going to be pin, it's not going to be fixed. But however, it's going to be following something similar to this. Whenever we have the same load, the same distribution, the same everything, the diagram for that type of support, this type of support, it will be following something like that, similarly to the other one. Where you're going to have certain value here, you can call it, I don't know, uh, how do we call this? L1 and L1. And then this is going to be the same negative moment, and this is going to be the same negative moment, and you're going to have a positive moment here. Now, how much is this value? Because what we're doing is an approximation between this and this. The easiest way to look at this is saying, oh, this is not exactly quite true what I'm telling you guys, but it works perfectly like that. If the inflection point is located at a distance here, 0, and the inflection point is located at a distance 0 0.2 here, I'm going to assume that for this intermediate case, now my inflection point is going to be at a distance of 0 0.1L. 0 0.1L. And we are going to use that principle. Once we know that, then a whole new universe of possibilities is showing. Because now I can start looking at this in a different way. If I know exactly, at, well, not, could it cannot be exactly this is accurate, this is approximate, right? But if I know that approximately at 0 0.1L this situation is going to happen, now look at what is happening here. This type of part of the diagram is similar when you have a cantilever beam like that, subject to distributed load. This is the diagram that corresponds to that. And this diagram is the diagram that corresponds to a simple supported beam. So why not to combine them? Whenever I have this type of situation, let's say that I'm going to work in, the, in this part, then I can imagine that instead of having that frame that we have, then we have something like this. We have a the column is there, and then we have this little piece, which is going to be in cantilever up to that point. And then what do we have? If this is the situation that I have, this little piece is going to be in cantilever, meaning I'm going to have this load applied there. But at the end, exactly at the end of that load, I'm going to have the other, lo the other load. I'm going to do this again. I don't like this. I don't like that drawing. Let's do this again. And I'm not going to edit it, so I'm sorry for you. So if we have to do that, once again, let's work with this one in the middle, which is easier to do. So we're going to do that. We have this part here with that little cantilever beam there. That cantilever piece is going to be subject to this load and this distance from here to here is going to be 0 0.1L. Now on top of this I'm going to have the other portion which is basically this portion 
and it's going to be statically determinate also simple supported beam and in the other end this column we're going to have something like this with again this is going to be a cantilever beam and this distance is going to be 0 0.1 L the total distance here is going to be 0 0.8 L this can be solved now what happened here is that we're going to calculate these reactions and these reactions are basically going to be acting at the tip of the cantilever and we do this for every single one of the spans that we have so basically once again we convert that into something that looks like this something like this and here same thing happens this was the original one so now I'm going to have this one with this one here this one here this one here uh, this is supported only here and here forget about this line and then here we're going to have that here 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 and here and those are my supports load this is going to be the load this is going to be the load and load and load and load and you know what I'm trying to do basically that's what happens here now this is really easy to calculate we should start by doing the analysis of this calculating the reactions and then flipping those reactions on top of the cantilever and then I can calculate the cantilever which is going to allow me to calculate the moments here, here, here and here as well as the reactions and with that I can do everything I can start that's going to give me only from the columns from the beams, the girders but then I can transfer those to the column and complete also the, the analysis for the columns so let's do that with a small example that I'm going to solve for you. Um, this is the example that we're going to be solving in the next video. See you.